Happy day and welcome back. I continue today the series of the stories behind the stories. And these are stories about mathematicians, famous mathematicians who, whose work is used in our classes even today. I'm gonna share. And here we are. Lean on the Blockhead is the name of my story. I got the picture from the Wikipedia online. The sequence starts with a zero, one, followed by another one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, and so on. Can you determine the next two numbers in the sequence? The sequence is enigmatic, but refreshing and is found in nature. Descartes talked about the connection between math and nature. Where did he get that? Blockhead? Fibonacci? Nah. That's what they called him. And look what he did for mathematics. Mathematics. Remember never to dismiss a student, never. So what's his story? Leonard of Pizza, or Fibonacci, was born in 1180 and died in 1250. He lived rather long, 70 years for his time. Descartes came after him, 1596 to 1650. He lived only 54 years. By the time Descartes came into being, the Fibonacci sequence of numbers was already established in nature. Let's share some fascinating pictures. This is a picture of the common pine cone. Those pine trees around, this is what falls from the tree when they're dry. And in this picture of the pine cone, the Fibonacci spiral is outlined with the white lines. See, it goes sort of around like a, like a corkscrew. It shows the first element, like right in the middle of the circle, then another, then the sum of those, and the sum of the last two, and so on, zero, and then one, followed by another one, the two, the three, the five, and continuing. The spiral on the right might more clearly explain the drawing in the picture. The Fibonacci rule, add the last two digits to get the next one in the sequence. I'm going to move on. Explained here, uh, there is this is a wonderful picture um, that was drawn and and which from which I copied from the internet. The zero is a little hidden. Plus one, they show you you get one plus one equals two. Two plus one equals three. Three plus two equals five, and continuing. Let's pause for more of Fibonacci's story. This young student often daydreamed at school. His teacher was rebuked or called him out because he paid so little attention. This particular day he dreamed about the Leaning Tower. Why did this structure still being constructed by important engineers lean? Only three stories have been built so far and the tower was leaning. During his geometry class, a commotion was taking place outside. The melee was far more interesting than any geometry lesson. The townspeople marched up and down demanding action. I think the whole thing should be taken down was one idea. Are you crazy? They worked on it for more than a year already. Someone must have measured the blocks incorrectly. Why can't we get decent workers nowadays was another remark. The argument seemed much like it was taking place in modern times. Finally, the cause of the problem was determined. The soil in pizza was very sandy. The foundation settled unevenly. There was no way to correct that, but the engineer of the project had a plan. We will thicken the layers on the leaning side, and by the time we reach the eighth floor, 
the tower will be perfectly straight. The plan backfired. The extra weight made the tower lean even more. 800 years later, in 2023, the tower still leans. It is called the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Tourists go to see it in droves. Everybody is attracted to this leaning tower that had been there so many hundred years ago and still is today. I have a little picture of the tower that leans today by four degrees or 17 feet. The angle, decline, incline, it's sign of declining. <laughs> That angle is four degrees. So I've drawn two rays in white to show you how little four degrees is, but it's actually 17 feet distance from the base to the tallest part. It's like we're taking the height, perpendicular distance from the base to the tallest part and the space in between is the four degrees. Fibonacci was engrossed with the problem of the tower. He understood how important it was to plan carefully. Further, he resolved to be very good at solving problems. Leonardo spent much of his time at work, of his time at the docks, where the fishermen gathered loading and unloading their cargo off the ships. The merchants courted, counted their goods and kept records of the money they spent. In those days, they used abacuses. I used an abacus at school and learned to count on it, much like in the old days. I have a picture that showed you what my abacus looked like. It didn't have the extra base, but the abacus was attached to the slate and the slate pencil. There are many more complicated ones available today. Try one and see how many calculations you can make on it. You can count to 10, this one has a count of 20, and you can uh, take away, add different sums, and by literally holding the beads and sliding them across, you can do your calculations. Simple ones with this one. Explore, go online and see what you can find. Leonard wondered how difficult it might be to check one's worth if a mistake was made. There was that mind floating into space trying to solve the problem the fisherman shared. He was only 12 years old then. One day, his father had to go away to Algeria, across the Mediterranean. He had to leave Leonard for a while, but Leonard would follow later. That saddened the young boy, but then he started to look forward to the day when he would join his father. Eventually, he's joined his, he joined his father in a rich city called Bougie. Bougie, you know, we use that name today to be cynical about people who are rich and a little mm, distant from the rest of us. By that time, he called himself Fibonacci, meaning son of Bonacci. Fibo is son. He was proud to name himself after his dad. Young Leonard mingled among the scholars who spoke in Greek and Arabic and other unusual languages. The merchants in this place used a different system of bookkeeping. The daydreamer was occupied with yet another problem to solve. He hung around the men and soon found a grandfatherly type. type. He dared ask questions. Uh, ex excuse me, sir. The old man was counting 47, 48, 49, and became confused with his own counting. What are those marks you are making in your book? What, these? The man replied, these are numbers, Hindu numbers, best way to keep accounts ever invented. That was his first, Leonard's first lesson in that accounting system. Fibonacci was pleased with himself. He whistled and walked away. Would it be great if everyone knew these numbers?
As he got older, he traveled around the world, visiting Greece, Egypt, Syria, and Sicily. Everywhere he went, he looked for people who were interested in numbers. Sometimes he solved problems for them, and other times they helped him solve problems with which he battled for years. He eventually settled down to write Liber Achi, Liber Abachi, a book of the Abacus, which was published in 1202. Books then were written by hand. No printing presses were yet invented. The book began. The nine Hindu figures are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With these nine figures and the sign zero, any number can be written. He proposed that Italy and all of Europe should use Hindu Arabic figures instead of Roman numerals. He demonstrated how to multiply and divide using these figures. At first, people resisted. After all, Roman numerals were used for many years with no problems. Eventually, the Hindu Arabic system was adopted and we use it today. Alas, how many students ever heard the name Fibonacci? How many know that the numbers they used to write were introduced to the world by an important math historian? Sadly too, Roman numerals can hardly be found in a math textbook. Leonard Fibonacci, one of the greatest problem solvers, introduced another famous sequence which carries his name. The link between math and nature was evident in the way some plants grew. Time for some more pictures. So here I have the slice of a snail's shell showing the spiral formation. This is a common one. If people are explaining the Fibonacci sequence, they very often use the snail's shell. And they use the pineapple, math in nature. The spirals, they're shaded here in blue or yellow or green. If we follow one spiral around the pineapple, we will be sure to get a Fibonacci number. We can get 34, that's a young pineapple, or 55, or 89, or the sum of 55 and 89, and so on. Uh, when, you're, when you go shopping with your parents, encourage them to buy a pineapple. See if you can identify the spiral around the pineapple. It's like your gift wrapping in the bias going on the diagonal, mark it with a Sharpie and count. See for yourself. Now this is a sort of a flat drawing so you could follow the sequence of this particular plant growth. Plants really grow in spirals. There's a shoot and there is a next shoot. And these two shoots put out shoots of their own. So let's see if we can follow. My hand could only go around <laughs> once. So here's the main trunk, let's say, going off into two branches. And the branches continue to grow. If we follow this one, this branch grows off and puts out another maybe stem. And it continues to grow and puts out another one. And what they do is do a cross section. So you can see how they're counting because the growth is a spiral growth. And the only way you can check the one, the two, the three, the five, and the eight is to do a cross section as if it were flat. And that's how we get one shoot, then two shoots, and this one is growing, and so you count one, two, three. This one starts growing, and it puts out two on each side. And so if we go up, as the tree is 
growing. We can count across one, two, three, four, five. And each one continues to branch off into smaller little stems. And that's how we count it. Okay. Now, I found some graph paper. How do we use the graph paper to show the Fibonacci sequence? So we're gonna do the squares in the graph paper. Let me pull it up a little higher. The first, the tiniest square is a one-on-one -on -one right in the middle. Okay, so we have one and the one. Okay, then we have a two by two. And then a three by three. Here's your two by two, so tiny. That's sort of light purple. Then the aqua, that's a three by three. Then this light green is a five by five. And this light cream is an eight by eight. And then here is a 21 by 21. I omitted the 13 by 13, but from eight you go to 13. That peachy color is a 13 by 13. And so it can be done on the graph paper as well. Blockhead? Nah. Not Fibonacci. Not this Leonard Young Fibonacci, son of Bonacci. I rest my case. Have fun and play with the Fibonacci sequence. Come back for more stories. You're going to love them.